Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. I'm your host, Bill Spicer. On this week's show, we're fishing for smallmouth bass during difficult cold front conditions. I'm joined by professional guide John Volk from Grindstone Outfitting. And together we're gonna to discuss the techniques needed to take these fish during difficult times. It's gonna be a very technical show, folks, so get your notebooks out. We'll be right back. Let him go back to live another day. And away he goes. Great fish. Wow. Yeah. Oh, baby. Look at that fish. Stop, wiggle, on the way down. The new Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions. On this week's show, we're fishing the Saugeen River near the town of Walkerton, Ontario. Our guide is Grindstone Outfitters owner, John Falk. John has guided on the river for many years and with his vast knowledge and easygoing personality, I'm assured of a great day. Walkerton is a picturesque and serene town that is only two hours drive from Toronto and the US border. Friendly people, quaint shops, along with all the comforts of home are available within a close proximity of world-class bass and steelhead fishing. Many wonderful hotels and incredible bed and breakfasts are available in the area. This, along with public access to the river, makes Walkerton an incredible and affordable vacation spot. The reports from the previous week on the river had been good and the fishing was excellent, but this week is different. It's late season and the weather is changing, bringing in cold front after cold front. Cold fronts will challenge all your angling skills. This is mainly because fronts send most fish into negative feeding moods. What is a cold front? A cold front can be described as the edge of a colder air mass that moves in on a warmer air mass. The intensity of the front will vary. Rain, high winds and overcast skies occur in the initial stages of most cold fronts. After the edge of cold air passes, typical weather conditions are bright, blue skies, few clouds, low humidity and a drop in air temperature. These post front conditions might be pleasant for most anglers, but they make for really tough fishing. There's a fish, Bill. Yes, it's a good fish too. Right by a rock where you said it would be. Oh, he's putting a good pull on your rod. Yeah, real good pull on my rod there. I think I want to get him on my reel. Now, cold weather tactics, John, we've had to slow down, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Colder weather, Bill, you've got to slow your presentation down. And presentation you know, is more important than anything, really, isn't it? Oh, absolutely, Bill. Like, yeah. you know, that, that fly basically has to crawl across the bottom. Yeah. So you've got to go down where the fish are, right? Right. And this is a good fish. That's a nice, that's a nice bass. Very nice bass. So presentation, though, that's the far more, that's even more important than the, than the, the selection of fly, right? Well, I think so, but again, like, you know, we're in a little bit chalky colored water, so yeah. my choice of the fly was to go to that black fly to give us a good silhouette. Silhouette, right. right. So, you know, a black bugger is a great little fly to use in mm -hmm. this situation. Right? A little bit of weight, and you're down there with a fish. That's a good start. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's a real nice start. Yep. Okay, this time. This time, I think we got it. Head up and skate them up behind me. Just take your rod right over my head. There you go. Very nice fish. Very nice it fish. Isn't that beautiful? Now, we want to talk a little bit about how to handle these fish today. What's really important, Bill, <laughs> see, I haven't lifted the weight of the fish. Right. So right now, I've suspended him on the side of the mm -hmm. boat. There's the fly. We're barbless, OK? Get your hand under his belly. Right. And pick him up. Thumb in the mouth, never in go. the gills. Yeah. That's and a nice looking bass. It's a good good start. Beautiful Very color. nice start. Look at the color. Yeah. And, and cold front bass, we've had to slow down our presentation. That's the most important thing, is, is how you present the fly. Beautiful. Slow it down to wow. a crawl. I'm talking a, just a crawl. 
Uh, these fish, because we've had a major cold front go through today, that they're hunkered down. You gotta put it in front of them and slow it down. So let's, let's try that again, that was great. How do cold fronts affect fish? Air pressure affects fish because their buoyancy in the water is controlled by an air sac. This is very sensitive and they feel the slightest changes in air pressure. It's generally believed that a falling pressure tends to make fish more active and a rising pressure shuts them down. Therefore, when a front is approaching us, the pressure is dropping until it arrives and then begins to rise. Thus, fish tend to bite best before an approaching front and generally not as well after it passes. Bass and other fish react to bright sky and high pressure by going deep and getting real tight to the cover. They also get very inactive. Responding to those changes will improve your odds. Three tactics you should use is to go deeper, go slower, and fish the cover. Fish on. Smaller fish. Little fish. But again, the presentation slow, just dragging it along the bottom. All you're gonna feel is like, if I could say, a sponginess on the end of your rod. And that's them inhaling the, the fly in. Just a little guy. Pretty little bass, eh? Pretty guy. I love the red eyes on them. <laughs> <laughs> but that's two within five minutes. I don't think that's too bad. <laughs> Again, like I say, it can be really tough when you have a cold front, especially with bass, because they're so temperature orientated. They really slow down a lot, but it doesn't mean that you can go a fishless state. Just slow down your presentation. of choice on a trip or an outing like this for smallmouth bass, especially these trophy smallmouth bass, for me would be a six weight, possibly a five weight, but a six weight is going to give you a good stiff rod that you can get some of these big fish out of that heavy structure. It's really important for you. Your reels should have a good drag system on it. Once you've got into that big fish, you want to make sure that the drag is going to be able to fight that fish with you and for you to land that trophy that you're after. During the trip today, we had to go through an array of equipment. The first choice was to go to an intermediate fly line. We wanted that slight sink rate to get those flies down deeper into that structure. It was really important. We were dealing with rough conditions, so we needed that line to get those, get those flies down deep. Secondly, or an alternative line for you would be a floating fly line, and that would allow you to work the flies closer to the surface, such as poppers and or deer hair type bugs that you could work just slightly underneath that film. Okay. This is a good, this is good that's, fish. That's a really good fish. Yes, right sir. Up in front of the boat, Bill. Oh man. Put your rod up high up in front of the boat. Yep. Oh man. So oh, this is a good, good fish. Good, good fish. Under just a little bit of a log. Oh yeah, taking some line. Oh. Pull. Pull. <laughs> Pull. Pull. Oh. Good, good fish. Oh, oh, he's giving you a go. Oh, it's you know what it is? It's a pike. It's a pike. <laughs> I'm surprised you still got him. Yeah. I'm going, I just seen his tail, but I mean, it just didn't seem like a bass fight to me. It was a little harder. <laughs> he's not huge, but he's uh, it's a nice northern. I'm surprised I got him. Yeah. He has that right in. No kidding. Right I, down. Yeah, I just need you to bring him straight up. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there you go, Bill. There we go. There we go. Yeah, there he is. That's, yeah, that's a, a nice pike. little pike. Yeah, a little fun day with a northern. Yeah. <laughs> Good stuff, buddy. There he goes. Boy, he, he attacked it. <laughs> yeah. He grabbed it. 
Again, structure, what can I say? That's where what we're fishing, uh, the pike, the muskie will be in the same areas. All structure, structure, structure. <laughs> now with that, I definitely got to check my leader. Yeah, I got, I got to retie. His teeth are all over that, so. Wow. <laughs> well, that was fun. That was fun. Oh, that was awesome. <laughs> well done, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Great rivers like the Saugeen River contain a multiple number of species. This river has a wonderful bass fishery, and as most people know, it is a trophy bass fishery, but this water also contains a really good population of muskie, it has some northern pike, it has largemouth bass in a few areas, and it also has resident trout, both brown and rainbow. So we can cover a lot just on this one particular river. Fish on. That's fish. Not very big though. Oh, I don't see that yet, but Yeah, I guess not. Not until you know. Oh, maybe. Oh, I don't know. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. That's, oh, a, good that's fish. a good fish. That's a good fish. Now, I was fooled completely by that. I said, that's a small fish, but he just ran right at me so they can fool you. Oh yes, this is a decent fish. Oh man, it's been a tough day. I'll admit that. But it's not a non-productive day. You can produce fish. You can see around me that the wind is blowing bad. I'm just going to put the anchor down here. Yeah, throw the anchor down there, sir. I'm going to get this on my reel. This is a decent fish. Had a lot of line out there. Wow. Good fish, Bad real nice fish. fish. Of course, I say this about every show, I have not met a fish I don't like. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, this is a good chunky one. I'll get him up there in a second. Yeah, as soon as you get his head up, I'll put him in the net. Oh man, oh man, oh man, oh man. That's a decent fish. Yeah, 15, 16 inches, very nice fish. Now, this has been a tough day. I admit, it's been a tough day. But, again, slow down your presentation. I kept my flies simple today. A woolly bugger, a black woolly bugger. As you can see, what I've done here, the black woolly bugger has a, a cone head on it, plus we've added a little split shot. John felt that we should be getting down faster. He wants it to sink right to the bottom right away because we're trying to hit close to the banks. And the banks are going sheer straight down. So that's where the fish are laying, tight to the banks, and he wanted extra weight to get it down fast. So that's been the secret, but a plain old black woolly bugger, nothing fancy. When you're dealing with cold front conditions, you need to get deep for those fish. The flies of choice today, very, very simple. The black woolly bugger. It's a basic fly, it sinks well, it gets down to that structure, and it gives a really good silhouette in a little bit off-colored water. Other fly patterns of choice would be zuddlers, like a conehead zuddler, a yellow zuddler, an olive zuddler, brown zuddler, all good patterns. Deer hairs, deer hair poppers, and deer hair flies, a good mix and array of them, would be something like a zoo cougar. Fantastic fly, gets down in there deep, and a white zoo cougar and a yellow zoo cougar would be the flies of choice. Throughout the day, rain kept coming and going with sleet and high winds. This made for difficult casting, but fishing to structure, slowing down my presentation, and going deeper produced fish through most of the day. The setup that we're using today is simple. We're using a clear, intermediate sinking line to approximately four feet of eight pound test monofilament and then the fly. An alternative setup you could use would be to use a floating line to a six foot sinking leader, then four feet of eight pound monofilament, and then the fly. The preferred temperature for smallmouth bass is, believe it or not, through the holiday season in the middle of summer. 72 right up to 78 degrees is a great time to be on the water for smallmouth. 
When you start getting into the colder season, as it approaches the fall, water temperatures start to drop. And then those bass actually move out of their, their summer holding areas and they move into what's called wintering water or colder water areas. They will tend to school up a little. They do get a little more difficult to, to, to catch, but you know, if you apply the right techniques, you'll get down to those fish and you'll have a blast. When you're fishing for smallmouth bass during the summer months, it's really exciting to be able to fish them on the surface. Popper action is explosive. Those fish come up and eat those poppers and they'll come flying out of the water to take them. That's a lot of fun. As the water temperature drops colder, it gets a little bit tougher. We start to get into flies that actually sink down to the bottom, weighted cone heads, that type of thing. That's going to get us down there, even some nymph action. As a matter of fact, we can even get to the point where we're actually fishing nymphs right down to the bottom, working the boulders right through those rocks, and working on those very difficult fish to catch. But again, big smallmouth is a reward at any time of the year. When you have a cold front situation, you must remember that smallmouth bass will hold tight to structure. Structures such as submerged trees and rock piles will definitely be hot spots for fish. Fish on. Yeah, right where you pointed out, John. Right beside that stump. Right, right beside though. the stump. So we're, we're, we're really concentrating on Structure right now, it's another small one, but it's a fish. Well, like I said earlier, Bill, these fish will really relate to structure at this time of the year. Absolutely, yeah. You know, they're starting to move into their colder water habitat. So the fish will not only school up, <clears throat> but they relate themselves directly under structure. So mm -hmm. as, you know, when you're casting, your fly has to be right at that structure. Right. Right. And it's not, I'm not talking like two feet away, I'm talking like six inches. Six inches. You know? So, you know, a, a little casting. bit of practice with your casting and, uh, so you can be more, a little more accurate. Very important that you get your casting down so you can put the fly right on the mark. Now, just a little guy. What a pretty fish. Very clean looking. Oh, they're such a great fish in this river. And they? very healthy, aren't they? Yeah, they're beautiful. Very healthy. See that nice color of green on that fish? Yeah. Now look at the color of the water. It's almost identical. It's, it's almost, almost like identical, a, yes. It's almost a chameleon trait, right? Yeah. I'll go, okay, okay, so we'll can concentrate on Rock piles, fallen trees, anything that they can hide and ambush their prey. That's what you're looking for. Yep. So now even right here to your right, you have a log laying in the water. And then we have a little bit of a shallow rocky point that comes up just downstream of the log. So you've, see, got a, yeah. you've got a little deep depression just, just upstream of that rocky point mm -hmm. and adjacent to the log. Right so over here. That's where they'll lie, right in those spots. And that's why I've got you working in those, in those areas so tight so tight to that structure. Yeah. This is how slow I'm bringing that in. Just crawling it along the bottom. Little two, three inch poles, nice and slow. And you know right away, you feel a sponginess, like you're a little resistance, but it's not a dead stop. A little resistance, that, that, that's them sucking the water back in and pulling the fly into their mouths. There you go. Fish on. There you go. Fish on. It feels, good, feels like That's a good, good one. Fish. Feels like a good one. Yes. Oh, yes. Another decent fish. Again, structure. This time, it's a log. We come across a log, and John said, don't miss that log. And look at this. Oh, I, I haven't seen him yet. He feels really good. He feels oh, real that's good. A big fish, Bill. It's a good fish. Good fish. Yes, sir. Get him on the reel. Oh. Oh, yeah. oh, yes, John, 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 ha <laughs> ha. This is the one you were hoping for, I think, buddy. Well, At I least I was to... hoping for it. I knew we had to be sitting close to that log. Oh, man. That log generally produces a good fish for me. Yeah. Now, John is intimate with this water. He knows it. He's guided on these waters for years, and he knows every nook and cranny. Oh, oh. my God. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoa. That's John, look at him. That's some lineup. That's a good four pound small ball. Four oh, or five pounds. That's four to five, I would think. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Take your time. Whenever he's ready, we'll slide him on the net just like that. Oh, my goodness. 
Oh, oh my goodness, John. Billy, there's about a 19 inch volley for you. <laughs> yes, sir. Gordon's belly. Oh, well, there you go, well, Bill. There you go. Isn't that a gorgeous fish? Oh, that's a gorgeous fish. He's nice, going. nice fish. Not as for the four or five pounder I thought. But no, but look at how half. thick he is in across the back. So this, nice fish. again, cold weather bass, perseverance, work pays off. Pays oh, off yes. well. Pays off well. Yeah. Beautiful, Bill. Good job. Ah. Yeah. Give him a good, good drink. And away he goes. <laughs> well done, buddy. That fish just made the day worth it, didn't it? It just made the day worth it. We've had a really tough day. I'm not, I mean, I'm not pussyfooting around here. It's, it's been horrid weather, high winds, rain, sleet, but it paid off. Slow the presentation down, and presentation is everything Absolutely. today. You know, you get good days when they'll hit a cigarette butt that goes down, yeah. down the river, but there's tough days like now. Presentation is what you want. Oh, it's key. It's it key. is absolute key. key, you know. Slow it down. Yep. And structure, structure, structure. And even the way I had you working that log, remember I said before, start at the top of the log, work down the log in about six to eight foot increments, right? Right, right. Every fish that's possibly underneath that log gets an opportunity to see yes. that fly. Yes, yes. And it works out for And it. I only worked so. half that log, I'm gonna work the bottom half Absolutely right you are. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go get another one, Bill. Cold fronts, they can make you crazy, but it shows by changing your tactics and slowing your presentation down, you can produce fish. You won't have banner days, but you can produce fish. For more information on today's show and other shows in our informative series, visit us on the net at thenewflyfisher.com. From all of us here at The New Fly Fisher, thanks for joining us, tight lines, and we'll see you next time. The New Fly Fisher has been made possible thanks to Ontario Tourism, Islander Precision Reels, and Orvis Sporting Traditions.